We're going to start, uh, though, on a, on, on a central topic, uh, and I'll start with uh, the senior member, with Representative Carlson. Uh, just in terms of, and we've already brought it up, I think, Senator Eakin, the state of taxes. Uh, will, be, will we be going up, down, sideways? How do we coordinate and facilitate and adhere to uh, U.S. tax system? How is that moving along, and how far do we have to go? Well, uh, I do serve on the tax committee, and uh, the question is conformity. Uh, and, you know, there were such massive changes on the federal level. The question before the Minnesota legislature is how to best conform. And uh, to date, uh, the governor has uh, introduced a, a tax bill, and I suspect on the House side at least, uh, the chair of the tax committee has indicated he's going to come out with a House version of the tax bill uh, sometime next week. So things are beginning to, to move. Um, how much uh, difference there's going to be between the bill that will be proposed on the House side and what the governor is proposing I think is somewhat an open question other than I think we all understand that there will be differences. Um, and they probably will be significant in, in many respects because it uh, is a bill that, uh, or an issue where we have to address uh, some pretty massive changes and uh, just the sheer uh, amount of uh, tax change means that there's probably going to be differences, uh, probably uh, significant differences before we get into conference committee between the House and the Senate. So uh, I uh, hope we're able to, uh, to complete it uh, by the time we end, and I think it's like 33 days that remain, or roughly the, the four weeks that we talked about. Uh, there is something that we have to be aware of, though. If, we're going to conf if we don't conform, it's going to be very complicated for people to complete their tax returns. Uh, if we conform, uh, we have to do that uh, in August uh, because the uh, software companies, TurboTax, for example, our own uh, Department of Revenue, have to get all those uh, changes made, the computers lined up and what have you, and uh, they tell us that uh, the last time, or the last date that you could do it would be sometime in August. But I think we're all hopeful that we'll do it before we adjourn in May. And I might turn to Representative Anderson from the House side, uh, a different viewpoint on what's been outlined here by Representative Carlson. Well, I agree that um, the governor has come up with his plan and a couple of tax increases, and I think he's also promised uh, some major relief for uh, middle class folks uh, in Minnesota. Uh, a big thing I'd like to see in terms of agriculture and in business in general is conforming to the, the new federal 179 fast depreciation schedule because there's also a, a difference in the way that the feds are going to treat uh, machinery, for example, that a farmer would trade into the implement dealer. Uh, it used to be you would just get it to boot price and, and move on with that, but uh, beginning in 2018, if your trade-in is worth, let's say, $50,000, that's going to now be classified as income. On your, on your federal tax return. And that's okay because they have up to a million dollars in, in 179 expensing, but on the state side, uh, current law, we have a total of 25,000. So uh, we need to raise that level of fast depreciation on that uh, section 179 for uh, construction companies, agriculture folks, and people that uh, would buy major pieces of equipment for their business uh, to move ahead and to conform to that uh, federal tax code. So what we've heard so far seems to me, and I'll turn to Senator Eakin, uh, sounds like a, a bit of a minefield for either party and whether the House or the Senate, there's lots of balancing to do here. There is. And, uh, and, and so, I mean, there's still a question whether there will be a tax bill because of that. I think some of the significant differences uh, between the, the legislator, legislature and, and the governor. Um, I, I think that everybody wants to have conformity to a certain degree. Uh, but the, the, the controversy is and how do you mitigate for tax increases that would result from such conformity. And, and there will be tax increases whether we conform or, or whether we don't conform, although if we conform, the tax increases will be more significant uh, that we have to deal with. And, uh, and so when we're dealing with that, uh, the question is, you know, who's going to get the tax relief? And therein lies the controversy uh, on, on that side of it. So. Um, so I think it will be highly controversial. Uh, this isn't normally the year that we do a tax bill. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a tax bill last year, and, and we had a lot of good things in that tax bill. It was a good bipartisan tax bill that included things like the 40 percent tax credit uh, for ag lands on bond issues. 
uh, which was uh, very important. I think that we're moving in the right direction. Hopefully, eventually, we'll remove all farmland from uh, bond issues because I don't think that that should be subject. It should be the house garage and one acre, just like everybody else is paying on their home property. But, uh, but I don't think that they should be paying on the farmland. And, and um, you know, there were other significant uh, things that we did last year too, like the business, uh, the business property tax, the statewide business property tax. We exempted the first one hundred thousand dollars of. Of, uh, uh, of value on those taxes. Uh, uh, so that is very uh, important. Uh, um, and so we thought we'd gotten our tax bill done now uh, because <laughs> of the changes at the federal level. Uh, now that uh, requires that we come back again. Um, but it is going to be, I think, the most controversial issue that we're dealing with this session. Um, I hope that we do get uh, tax conformity. Uh, I don't uh, want to see the, the com you know the complications that people would have to go through and having to wade uh, through two different types of uh, tax standards as they're uh, f figuring out their taxes next year. I would turn then to Senator Mark Johnson. You come from a huge farming area and lots of interest right. uh, from right. the farm side, but also a lot of businesses. Right. So you're uh, two years now into your Senate seat, and this is a major issue brought upon us one, for good or worse by Congress. Right. How, do we, right. how do you work in your caucus to get things tightened up correctly. Yeah, this is, you know, Kent laid it out, I think, really, really well here. With the things that we did in 2016, you know, we were very happy with If you think about our district and the $100,000 that we that we exempted in business uh, property income, uh, uh, property tax, most of the businesses in my district and the cities and the towns around there, you know, saw significant reductions. Most of those businesses don't aren't valued at you know hundred thousand dollars. I'd say probably eighty percent of them are less than that. Um, so we did these these things with uh, with the bill last year that we were we were really happy with. Uh, so now we have this conformity issue, and we all have agreed that conformity must be done. But how do we do that? And that that's where the details come into play. And and like uh, Senator Eakin said, you know. Somebody's going to end up with a tax increase, but how do we minimize that to the very fewest possible? And that's really become you know, a minefield, like you say. Um, so we've been we've been going through a few different scenarios, and nothing fits quite right yet uh, that that I've seen that I feel real comfortable with. Uh, so hopefully, within the next few weeks, we can we can tweak that what we do have uh, into a plan that I think will help. You know. 95, 96 percent of Minnesotans. That that would be great with uh, seeing some of the the tax uh, reductions. Okay. Well, if you've just joined us, uh, viewers at home, this is your legislators, and we invite your questions. Uh, I believe you have on your screen the number to call, or you may contact us by email as well.